Humans, on the whole, they're pretty rubbish. Some of us go on to achieve great things for the betterment of mankind, while some are just awful people. <coughs> Hedge fund managers. <coughs> uh, but the majority of us are just a bit rubbish, going hither and thither doing very little to contribute to the legacy of our species. We are drones. Drones like ants. Ants who coincidentally feature in this here game. Funny that, almost like it's a planned opener. I could have done better though, couldn't I? See, humans are rubbish, and I am being rubbish, and therefore I am one of those. Ants, drones as they are, are at least proportionately awesome for their size. They seem to absolutely peg it everywhere, don't they? Now, they actually run at 300 meters an hour, which is the equivalent of a human running at 50 miles an hour. There won't be any stopping from them either to wheeze away the damage that's been caused by successive microwave Chicago Town mini pieces. And they can lift really heavy stuff too, 50 times their own body weight. That's like a human lifting several tons. And that's just an average everyday ant. And we have the temerity to have an Olympics to show how good the most physically fit of us are. It's embarrassing. The very fastest of humanity aren't running that fast or benching that much. It's about time ants had their time to shine in the spotlight of sporting competition because frankly they are better than us. So thank you LSP for publishing a game that shows the Earth's true amazing athletes. Now you may recognise these ants if you're a fan of late 90s animated movies, particularly the work of DreamWorks. Yes, Often thought of as the B-Tech Bugs Life, which of course was Pixar's similarly creepy crawly related effort the same year, Ants did pretty well in its own right. It raked in $172 million from a budget of $42 million. Ants also featured a stellar cast of voice talent too. Woody Allen, Danny Glover, Gene Hackman, Sharon Stone, Dan Aykroyd, Anne Bancroft, Jennifer Lopez, Christopher Walken and Jane Curtin are an impressive lineup and only one of them has married their own stepdaughter. The story tells of anxious worker Z who falls in love with Princess Bala. They and their friends have to prevent a potential colony ending coup by General Mandible who plans to wipe out the work ants with a flood whilst also trying to bring a little more individuality and agency to the mindset of their people. But while they're not either doing or thwarting genocide or trying to encourage societal and mass psychological change, they're also doing sports and also racing cars, tiny, tiny racing cars in Ants Racing, which was released on the Game Boy Color by LSP the same year. And also in the game Ants Extreme Racing, released by Empire on the Game Boy Advance, Windows, PS2 and Xbox in 2002. Who knew this was all going on in the world of Ants? Ants World Sports was published by Light and Shadow Production, who you might recognise as the house that released the surprisingly fantastic Droopy Tennis, which we reviewed just last week. M4 Limited were the coders, a team that seemingly exclusively programmed licensed games on the Game Boy Color in advance. They did handheld games based on the Tasmanian Devil, Mission Impossible and Resident Evil franchises. And how does Mary, Kate and Ashley win a circle sound to you? To me it sounds like a future video. Something common with LSP games is that this was a European exclusive, unusual of course for an American franchise. Ants World Sports features five stages of track and field style fun and frolics for your budding micro Olympian. Each stage is only selectable once you've reached a podium on the one previous. Although a lot of events are common across all five stages, each one will introduce at least one new sport for your six-legged athlete to compete in. You can select from four characters who are all major players in the movie. Z, Bala, Weaver and Mandible will be doing what they can to prove that they are indeed the best and ants of the opposite cast should want to have their larvae. They all have different attributes 
that will act as strengths or weaknesses depending on the event. Each event starts with the 100mm race, and it's exactly how you'd expect. A rhythmical button basher with you alternating between the A and B button as quickly as you can. It's a good thing I'm emulating here, as my cheap-ass 2006 era controller is a lot less expensive to replace than an entire handheld console. I'm not a huge fan of track and field games, but even if I was, buying a game in this genre sounds like a recipe for tear duck explosions in children. Parents, buyer beware. Another event you'll be seeing a lot of is the Cotton Bud Javelin. Along with another couple of power-based events, I had trouble getting my head around this initially. In events of this type in things like track and field, you would start bashing out your run-up and then hold a button to determine the angle of the throw. In this one, you do all the work before you've actually started the event. You choose the angle of your run and then you power up your run before the countdown is even done. Then your only interactive element with the game after that point is determining the timing of the throw or the leap itself. It seems a little bit unwieldy, but once you get your head around it, it's eventually okay. It's better to use cotton buds as small javelins than put them in your ear as Q-tips often worn on their packets. It's literally their only point of existence and I will continue to stick them in my ear, otherwise I'll have earwax stalactites Thanks very much, Johnson and Johnson. Roller skating is another event that you'll see a lot, and it's exactly the same game as the 100mm dash, just with two less participants and different graphics. And apparently you're on skates. This is done over four stages to determine the placing of the podium. Two semi-finals, a third place playoff, and then a final. Imagine how small those skates must be. Ants legs are basically poseable eyelashes. If I was to say to you, while termite rodeo, what would you think? Probably that I was having an episode or a moment, but that is exactly what you do here. You've got an unwilling beast under your thorax and you'll need to cling on for dear one to two year lifespan to ensure it doesn't dismount you violently. The trick in this one should be second nature to any veteran of Tony Hawk's grinding. There's an opportunity for a Mrs. Tony Hawk's joke, which you can insert yourself. You have to keep that bar in the middle, else you'll have floor dirt all over your mandibles. The next event we're covering is the tug of war. A mano a mano or anto a anto struggle. It's another button basher, but with this one you also press backwards to enhance your mighty pull. Can you tug off your opponent quickly before he can finish you? Yes. Shall we check out the aphid jump? Some poor green creatures are corralled in numbers from four to eight and then taped together and jumped over or on if their oppressors fail at what they're supposed to be doing. Controls are identical to those of the cotton bud throw, much like the shot put event, which is a redressed version of the cotton bud throw, but with the Q-tip swapped out for a bloody big rock. The final round on stage five is hidden away for a reason. It's a relay reenactment of the 100 millimeter race and it goes on for an incredible three minutes plus. The 100 millimeter race only goes on for 15 seconds tops. Three minutes for an intense button basher is one of the most cruelest acts a game has ever done to fingers. It will turn your arm into a lactic acid factory. Truly an act of appendage terrorism by M4 at work here. You may not even notice that you've cloned yourself three times over. Such will be the pain. Win this and you'll be the king of the anthill. Hoorah! Graphically, it's adequate or so-so if you prefer. Sound is similarly average and... Do you know what? This is all good because the presentation matches the gameplay. The whole game is middling. The bare minimum is done with the sports. There's hardly any creativity in them, as essentially you're just doing three events in terms of gameplay. You're doing the running events, you're doing a power bar management with the jumping and the throwing events, and then you're doing the balance on the termite. Plus, it's so light in content, I saw all it had to offer in 60 minutes. No reviews exist in the press from the time 
unless you speak German. So instead, let's end this episode with a short pun summarization of Ant's World Sports. After a thorough inception, I'd say not to ask your antennae for this for Christmas, as it will bug you. You'll be termitally disappointed. Sorry about that. I would say it looked better written down, but it didn't. Anyway, next up, we're going to stay with the Olympics and we're instead going to have a look at an official license. But it's not a sports game. It's a platformer in Izzy's quest for the Olympic rings. Like, subscribe and K thanks bye.